Climate change, the energy transition, and a search for a more sustainable world are key themes driving the global economy. Well, to discuss what's top of mind amongst the firm's investors, we're joined by Jessica Matthews. She's the Global Head of Sustainable Investing at JP Morgan Private Bank. Jessica, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Sustainability as a theme has really captured the imagination of vast sections of the population over recent years, hasn't it? What are some of the tailwinds that are driving this interest, do you think? Yeah, you know, it really has taken off a lot in especially the last five years or so. And I really think there's three key catalysts for that. The first, unfortunately, is that we're seeing a lot more extreme weather events, and it's just created a lot of awareness and a greater sense of urgency around needing to find solutions for climate, for decarbonization. And I think investors see a role that they can play in that. Secondly, we saw the war in Ukraine last year really highlight the need for greater energy security. But also in doing so, we need to think about the energy transition and, and clean climate solutions. And finally, we see government getting more active. And so government policies and government um, you know, legislation, like in the U.S., the Inflation Reduction Act, have really been a catalyst for um, government spending that has really enabled and encouraged more private capital to flow into this area as well. And as we've seen this explosion of interest in sustainable investing, we've also seen this term greenwashing come about. Can you explain what that is and also what the firm is doing to protect clients from some of the companies that are practicing greenwashing? Greenwashing basically refers to when a firm or maybe an investment strategy is basically overpromising on its sustainability credentials. And maybe when you look through, isn't actually doing what they're saying they're doing. And so, you know, it's really highlighted the need for two things. One is really for government to play a role. And, and there's been a lot more regulation that we've seen globally to help kind of discourage greenwashing. Um, and so one of the ways in which that happens is requiring better labels on, on the investment side around investment funds or greater transparency into what the fund owns. And so that's been one really important way. But what we can do at JP Morgan, it also really relates to that notion of transparency. So one of the ways we do that is through greater diagnostics, greater reporting. We acquired a firm in 2021 called Open Invest. It's a values-based fintech firm. And so they have all of these capabilities and a really proprietary way of evaluating portfolios and showing clients in a very tangible way, which is more sophisticated than just, say, looking at scores, but looking at a lot of metrics so they can understand what they own. And I think this really helps to avoid this notion of greenwashing. Recent studies are showing that younger generations are increasingly considering themes around ESG and sustainability when it comes to investing. What can you tell us about the next gen interest in this area and what impact do you think they'll have on the marketplace? I just saw a recent study by Mundi and Business Times, which showed that 85 percent of Gen Z investors already consider themselves ESG investors. And similarly, we've seen a lot of different studies pointing anywhere from 90 to 99 percent of Gen Zs are interested if they're not already doing ESG investing. So taking those studies against the backdrop of what's about to be the largest generational wealth transfer we've seen in history, I do think it's going to have an outsized impact on flows and interest into sustainable investing going forward. And just looking at the industry geographically for a moment, how does the market differ from Europe to the United States and Asia? Europe has really been a leader on sustainable investing going back decades. You know, this notion of integrating ESG or environmental, social and governance into investment portfolios is something they've really adopted um, for a long time. Um, and I think the a key focus for a lot of Europeans now is also on the energy transition and climate investing. So that's been kind of, to generalize, a bit of a, a difference between the U.S., which has been maybe a little slower to adopt, though I do think that the interest in the U.S. is significantly picking up um, for all the reasons I mentioned earlier and a lot more awareness about the issues we face and that investments can make a difference. Um, and also in Asia, we see a lot of interest um, really in thematic strategies there, um, things like you know, climate solutions, clean tech, decarbonization, but also um, you know, more niche areas like the circular economy. Mm. And finally, on the subject of themes, what themes do you think are going to drive activity in the market uh, for the rest of this year and into 2024? Yeah, we do see a lot of sustainability themes that are actually really becoming investment themes. And what I mean by that is that either from a risk standpoint, because investors really need to think about things like you know, increased weather events and disasters through the lens of an investment portfolio, a risk to an investment portfolio, 
but also ways in which we can invest going forward as a megatrend or a growth area. You know, these really present strong investment opportunities. So you know, a key example, of course, is the energy transition and investing in climate solutions, but also other areas that are climate related, like sustainable agriculture, like water, like the circular economy. And so I think these are catalysts going forward for a lot more investment into sustainable investing. Certainly a dynamic time for the industry. Jessica Matthews, the Global Head of Sustainable Investing at JP Morgan Private Bank. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.